I grew up in the countryside and I was surrounded by butterflies, by flowers, by nature. And my parents created a wildlife sanctuary. So in the morning, actually, we, ha we were having breakfast with donkeys, uh, with apes, with all kinds of animals. And we were communicating with them as we would do with other humans. There was no hierarchy around us. But one day, I heard somebody saying to me, we are more intelligent than all other species. So for me, it couldn't make less sense. Because, for example, when you talk to a dog, the dog understands you. But when the dog talks to you, <laughs> you don't understand, all right? So who's the most intelligent? And that goes with all other species, because they have been developing skills, all sorts of intelligence, which we don't have. And you know innovation, when you start to say you are number one, or you're more clever than the others, or you believe you're working for the number one company in the world, you're already lost. <laughs> because innovation is about looking at what could be improved and working on it, all right? So obviously I wanted to be a vet because for my love for nature and for animals. So to pay my university, I start scooping ice cream for a very famous ice cream company, a number one in ice cream. <laughs> and three months later, the company offered me my first job. So it was kind of a shock for me doing my veterinary study and having this opportunity. This opportunity was to go on in, onto business development. So it was a very good challenge for me. It was very cool as a young guy to travel the world. Of course, I didn't have any money, so they would pay for it. Fantastic. So this is why I accepted, and I started to work in business development, working on all aspects of classic business from the ground up. And one day, my boss said to me, Fabrice, we have a serious problem. It's been 10 years we've been trying to sell ice cream to the Italians. <laughs> and it's impossible, you know? So you have to do something about it. Do you take the challenge? I say, yes, why not? You know, I, I, I had no clue. And he said to me, you know, I forgot to tell you, you accepted the challenge, so you will go. But I forgot to tell you, we've been managing this business for 10 years, and we've been firing 10 general managers before you. So the only thing I knew, first of all, I was more junior than themselves. They were more brilliant than me. But the other thing I knew is that if I had applied the same technique, I would have had exactly the same result. So it would have been a one-way ticket, which we didn't, didn't know. And my boss said, you know, you go for it, but we don't want to lose you, of course. So I went there, and I knew I had to reinvent something. And the only thing I knew, actually, was my friend, what was my friend in the nature told me, is that if you use your instinct, you can communicate to everyone, anyone, and all living, all living creatures. So I started, <laughs> so I decided to use this skill. And uh, I read a story about Nelson Mandela, who was in a jail in South Africa, as you know, and he was tortured. He was tortured, tortured, tortured. He couldn't speak the language, language of the guardians. And year after year, he started to learn the language of the guardians. And what he said is that at the end, when he was freed, he became friend with the guardians. And what he said is, when you talk to a man in a language, you talk to his head. But when you use his language, you talk to his heart. So, of course, then it was a, very, a big lesson for everyone. A big lesson for business. We've been using, we've been managing things in on a rational way because that's the easiest part of business. And then we realized we had two parts of our brain: one, the rational, the rational one, and the, the emotional one. So it was a very, very important insight which I decided to apply in, in my little job in Italy. So basically, I created this cup. The Italian, if you go back to the cliches, if you go back to the instinct. They love the mama, <laughs> in priority. Then they love good food, they lo love design and fashion. And so I said to myself, if you don't put these emotional keys, this instinct into everything you do in strategy, 
then you don't talk to the Italians. You don't reach their heart. And so that's what I decided to do. So I went to see their most marvelous design company. And I said, well, let's make that. Let's make a cup of ice cream that we will call Big Love, which will be the first cup ever in the world in which you can share ice cream in bed with your lover. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we did. But in terms of design, if you look at inside the cup, you will see it's made of stainless steel, which is the memory of the mamas who used to eat ice cream in Italy in a, in a little cup made of stainless steel. So it was to keep up the heritage, you know, to connect with the past, but to be in the present. And when you look at the spoon, you would say, well, it's easy, it's love, so it's a hard shape. But in fact, no, it's more than that. It's the first spoon ever that drops ice cream exactly in your mouth where you have the maximum of pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. If you don't, we are humans. We, pleasure is fundamental for us. It's one of our most powerful instincts. So if you add pleasure in everything you do, then you start connecting. So it was a learning uh, at a local, uh, for a country. So a few years later, I got a call from the president of a number one beauty company, the number one beauty company. <laughs> and she said, well, we've seen what you've done on ice cream with the Italians. So why don't you, we, you help us to do the same on fragrances? Our business is doing well, but it's a bit in decline everywhere. We've been globalizing the business, so we don't have a, a good love effect any longer. So why don't you join us and try to do the same? So I, I thought it was really cool. And it, it worked very well, so I decided to take the challenge. It was maybe another one-way ticket, but anyway, let's try. So as usual, I've been looking for the instinctive keys behind the category. And when you uh, work in fragrance, you know that it's about perfume and the, the old word from perfume in Latin is perfumum. And perfumum means you go through a smoke. And this smoke has many magics. It's not only what you spray on yourself, you know, to uh, feel like uh, you've increased your level of seduction or you wear uh, the perfume of a celebrity, which has no, nothing to do with the fragrance you're wearing, but <laughs> it's much more than that. Because the, the smoke is warm, it connects us with the gods. So it has been used by all civilization to connect us with the god. Very big magic. There's also the magic of connecting to your memory. If you smell the rose of the garden of your grandmother, all of a sudden, whoo, you're back in time. If you smell an exotic flower now in this room, all of a sudden you travel in space and you are on holiday maybe, or something. So a lot of magic. And the last magic, of course, is the healing magic that we've forgotten. But perfume can heal yourself through our aromatherapy or spas or everything. So it's magic we've forgotten. So by just going back to the instinctive level, we looked at the business opportunity and we said where we were selling psh, psh, in fact, we have a business opportunity and a space for innovation which is three times bigger than what we thought. So this is just to show you the power of uh, working with the instinct. And then I applied this skill uh, on beauty, on the beauty business. And when you sell, when you are working on the beauty business, is hope, right? So it's hope <laughs> that one day you will look better than the girl next door. All right? Or maybe you will stop aging. So, big dream. All right? But it's a dream. It's an instinctive dream. It's a universal dream. So, it works because it touches us deep, deep, deep inside. And then I worked in fashion. Well, fashion is about reproduction. You know that. So, basically, what you do is you wear colors and shelves and all sorts of accessories to attract the best mate, to have the best family, and to have fun in your life. So, this is what we have been doing throughout the world, uh, in all civilization, that we are still doing now. <laughs> and so, this is our basic instinct. Fashion is about reproduction, increasing our chances to uh, reproduce ourselves. And if you betray that, then you're in serious trouble. 
if you are a luxury company and you go all over the world and you sell the same bags, chances are that the girl next door is going to look at the other girl next door and say, you have the same bags. So she quits your beautiful company because she's not exclusive any longer. So I've learned how to go deep, deep into the instinctive level because I believe that the more an innovation works on an instinctive level, the more you talk to the heart of the humanity and the maximum of, of people. But by doing this exercise, I found out that accessing your instinct was the most powerful thing you could have, which is very bizarre to say in business, because most of our businesses have realized that, hey, we have a rational brain and an emotional brain, so let's work on emotion, because then we can bind a deeper relationship. But few of us have understand that this is a little part which is behind it, which is the most important. It's your instinct, which is the most important thing in innovation. Because today, if you lose the classic way of taking a decision in innovation, you have a market intelligence report, you have a consumer insight, you have maybe five, six, seven tools, and then you take your time, it probably makes more than six months or one year to use these uh, studies, and you take a decision because everybody wants to take a decision. All right, so at a maximum you use seven, 10 uh, studies to take your decision. If you use your instinct, in less than a second, you use one, more than one million tools of evaluation, which have more than one million year of experience. So trust yourself. It's time now to go back to our instinct. Of course, we can have the rational tools, we can have the emotional tools to help us, but it's really time to access our instinct. And innovation, you know what we do, generally speaking, we have the little ch children to taste our innovation. And you know why? Because a little children don't have a lot of experience. So it's basically using his instinct. And we say if a six years old uh, child can understand what you are creating, then you increase your chances uh, to be successful on the market. That is very easy. That is accessible to anyone in the world. This is free. Just listen to your instinct. And the more I was working on that, the more I was trying to find what is common among humanity. What is the key that moves us? You know? uh, what is the key that doesn't only moves us, but the key that moves all the living species around, around us? And what I found out is it is life. It is life that connects every one of us. It is life that connects all, of, all the species uh, among them. And so, at that stage, I thought I was in a Matrix movie. <laughs> because I was a CEO of a big company, and I say, well, I feel there is something more to do, something more exciting. So I felt like having the choice between the red pill and the blue pill. The red pill would be to keep doing business as usual, you know, in the wonderland, all right? <laughs> you keep on working, you have not enough salary, you don't ask questions, you, you do business as usual. Oh, I take the blue pill, and then I wake up, and I face my word, and I try to help. I try to do something. So, obviously, I looked around, and the state of the planet was not, was not that great. The state of my colleagues was not that great. So I said, there is room for innovation here. It's the right time. So I took the blue pill. I take the blue pill, and I applied my little techniques to the business itself looking at all the basic elements of business. And starting from the reason why we do business. And some of them, some people I knew were saying, you know, well, business is about making business. And I felt, well, that cannot be possible. Is that all we can do? Doing business, to do business? There must be something more to do, right? I want to use the economic power to do good. I want to do something. I want to innovate. I want to you know, help my society to go at a higher level, not to do business. And then I looked at the word consumer. I was terrified by this word. I said, consumer, what is it? You know, it doesn't make sense to my instinct. You know, if I look at you, if I look at people, then I see friends. Friends is an instinctive word. It touches me. And that's why. You know, the social companies, social network, who have been building on that, creating communities of friends, have developed an economic power which is much higher than the product company that 
consider and are still using the word consumer when they do meetings, <laughs> meetings themselves. You know, when I hear that somebody is still using this word consumer, I'm terrified and say, well, you have to upgrade, <laughs> upgrade your language because this is really terrible. It doesn't correspond to reality. It doesn't correspond to life, basically. And then the what. We are doing business to produce more products or to face our competitors. Well, it doesn't, doesn't make sense to me, all right? We want the why we do things. We start from the why innovation because you start from the highest level of energy and you go down because you know that down the track is going to be very, very painful for you. And so uh, you start with the why, which is higher level of energy. And then sustainability, it's on everyone's lips. Sustainability means to sustain, means status quo. It's like feeling asleep, really. And it's a very dangerous word because we human don't want to stay where we are, all right? We want always plus, plus, plus. We are programmed to do more. If you say to a finance, financial controller, please stay at break even, the, the guy is going to quit your company, right? He wants to improve things. He wants always to go higher. So if you innovate on cars, it's not about reducing the CO2 level or worse, compensing <laughs> the CO2 level. It's about creating cars, which the more you drive them, the faster you go, because that's your instinct, it's your pleasure, the more you produce fresh oxygen, fresh water, the more you eliminate pollution. This is the objective. Now it's very difficult to go there, but this must be the objective of a plus uh, set of mind. If you work on food, it's not about producing more foods. It's about producing food that the more you eat them or the more you produce them, the more you generate biodiversity, the more you clean up the water, the more you clean up the soil, and the more you clean up the air. So that's kind of very, very easy at an instinctive level. If you talk about leadership, new leadership is not about having your own career and be the big boss. We measure leadership today as the number of people you've been inspiring. So it's not about concentration, it's about distribution now. And you see that everywhere in the energy or, uh, or all around you. But I have to confess, I never had an idea in an office. And the reason why is very simple, is that when you work on innovation and you, need, you want ideas, you need your body to be fully loaded with fresh oxygen, good nutrients, you, be, you need to access your instinctive brain, and you, be, you need to be at 100% yourself. You can't be at 90%, you must be at 100% yourself. And this is why only nature can give you the vital elements to reach this top performance that we need in innovation, uh, to open your mind and to, uh, and to innovate. So I think we have entered an era of innovating for life, because this is our common language, and this is what we'll speak to everybody, and not only to ourselves, because we have developed a language between ourselves, forgetting the rest. But if you innovate with life and for life, then you do your job, because you, you bring everything together, all the living species together. Now, looking back, uh, when I was a child, I understand the value of accessing my instinct, I know the power of that. I know that if you destroy nature, you destroy yourself. I know that if you're creating a business, forgetting about life, you destroy life. And I know that if you innovate with life and for life, you thrive and you are 100% yourself, you're authentic, you're powerful, you're instinctive. And I think this gives us a fantastic opportunity to reinvent everything around us, from architecture, from education, from the food we produce, from everything around us, introducing this instinctive key, which is life. And I think the most important thing is to upgrade which I think is the most obsolete thing we are doing on this planet, is business itself. Thank you. <laughs>